Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's edition of Beyond the Ordinary Show. And y'all, we're diving in today. We have, oh my God, it's been a while. We have Mary and Gary O'Brien joining us today, and they're extraordinary in the light that they share through the channeling they they bring in through a spirit guy named Zar. Am I pronouncing it correctly? It's been a while. Yeah, yeah, Zara, yeah, yes, Zara. thank you. Yeah, thank Zara. you. Yeah. Y'all, it's spelled D Z A R, and way to Zar comes in as well. Mary and Gary, how they embody and carry it forward and translate, it's amazing. And then Zar comes in in this trio, this confection of what's available to amplify us. And it's quite extraordinary. So, Mary and Gary Bryan, their experience channel from the spirit guide Zar. And it's a playful energy of transformation and compassion. And they've been um, bringing in the work since 2008. Uh, they live in their farm in Australia. Um, they're connecting people all over the world. They're guiding retreats in September into the Mediterranean. And there's a lot that is awakening and a shift or an acceleration or an access to light and how we have a relationship with it now during these times that I'm really really excited to unpack what Mary and Gary and Zar have to reveal to us as we talk about the return of the light shamans. Um, mm. And with that, Mary and Gary, welcome back to Beyond the Ordinary. Thank you, John. It's great yeah. to be back. Good to see your wonderful face again, mate. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> great to be here. And I love, you know, when you just said about our relationship with light, I think that's, you know, that's such a key because it, we are light and as we um, can create that relationship and the connection to this expanded frequency of light that is coming through, then the dynamic of who we are and how we live and what we create and the ripple that we create shifts and changes. So it really, relationship is such a beautiful mm -hmm. word. We use, we talk a lot about collaboration, collaboration with frequency, collaboration with light. And, mm -hmm. uh, and that's, you know, that in a nutshell, that's really what it, is we're not separate to the light we are the light mm. and the more that we embody that as you know the more our lives change and we create change in the planet mm. Mm. And, and the access to it again just the consciousness of just speaking into that is an activation within itself but there's a depth that's just we get to play with and i want to get into first into what is a light shaman what's the why is it specifically a light shaman and that another type of shamanism perhaps that's mm -hmm. that you're bringing through Mm, okay. Actually, do you mind if I go? Because Zars lurking. I, go, I absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I do not mind at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just finding a way. That's like that. asking me if I'm if I'm upset if you bring out the dessert before the meal. No. <laughs> 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 oh, I'd be very happy to be known as the dessert. Oh, oh God, that's so good. Oh, goodness. Okay, you can just talk amongst yourself. So as, as I was saying, as you're joining us, just to get pictures, I'm sure there'll be a lot of new people listening in that, that haven't met us and felt the frequency before. Um, so Zara is an energy of compassion. They've never been in human physical form, and, and their purpose is for us to help us remember who we truly are and to come back to that knowing of us as so much more than the experiences that we've had from the restrictions, from the darts, from the, you know, that feeling of our larger knowing, how do we step into being that? And we've been collaborating with Zara since 2008, so 16 years really, which is amazing that the information just keeps evolving and changing. So when Zara shares information with us, there's always a couple of levels to it, and you've experienced this in one-on-ones as well as in these sessions, John, that there's the conscious conversation, there's the information that Zah shares that our mind is able to feel and expand and understand. And at the same time, there's what we call the frequency conversation, which is this energy exchange. And the energy exchange happens whether you're sitting in the room together or if you're listening back to the replay because we are the same frequency as are. We are this energy of compassion and creation. And so as we allow our energy to flow into this conversation and be a part of the conversation, it to me it feels like we plug back into the mainframe. You know, we kind of we re we recalibrate ourselves for who we truly are. So the invitation always when people listen to this is to use your mind, think about it, notice what's um 
what makes sense for what you already know, what is the new information, and even more importantly, allow your energy to begin to um, jiggle <laughs> and begin to vibrate and shift and change because we are all energy first. And so the energy shift is the core for any of the changes. And bringing more light in is one of the ways that we vibrate and change our frequency and our vibration. Mm. So that's beautiful. Explore. Yeah, thank so, you for that. Zah has joined us, so welcome, mm. Zah. Mm. 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 So I always loves their conversations with you, John. So always, mm. such a I love being with Zah. Yes, yeah, it's always great. Mm. I can feel it every time my heart just opens up. Mm. 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 Uh, mm. So welcome, 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 young ones. <sighs> mm. <laughs> so yes, yes. Oh. <laughs> oh goodness, yes, yes. Best be prepared, shall we say? Yes, best. Want people to buckle up. Mm. Yes, just a little <laughs> bit, just a little bit. We are truly here to answer so many of the questions that you have had throughout the entirety of this existence. There, we are here to talk with you about the energy of the light shaman. And many of you upon your earth, you know of earth shamans. You know of their importance, you know of their relevance, you know of their purpose. And it is the earth shamans that connect beings to earth. They communicate with earth to bring that knowing, that relevance, that sensitivity to all human who will listen. And here is an interesting thing. This energy of the light shaman. Now we wish to ask you some questions. Hmm. 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 <laughs> so <laughs> this young one you see before you mm, he looks so young but mm, wow is he wrinkly <laughs> yes <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> made made many big impressions upon earth. Now <sighs> so <laughs> this is also for all those who are listening, all the other wrinkly ones out there, young one, as well, not just you. Mm. We wish you to ask you these questions. How uncomfortable have you been feeling? Have you been within this life? There's the sense of those of you who just, for whatever reason, seem different, seem not to fit in, seem that the world that you see around you... Um, sometimes does not even make sense that there's an energy within you that you know but cannot describe. There's an energy within you that you know feels like home, but where you are in this moment does not. There's a sense of self that seems so much bigger than what this physical life has offered you. And you have all found it a little tiring, a little arduous, just even getting up sometimes. Hmm. And it's interesting, people are commenting in the chat oh, yeah. and saying, yeah, more than a little <laughs> feeling between worlds. And it is that feeling, and I'm sure, you know, everyone listening, there's there's been an intensification at the moment because there's so much more light, and we can all see that. You know, we know with the conversations we have with people, 
people who would never have been open to the idea that they were more than just their, you know, physical 3D life, that's opening and shifting. But at the same time, there's this stark contrast to the separation and the pain and the, mm. um, well, the darkness, really, that's happening on the planet. And that duality, I think, Zoe, is becoming even more mm. highlighted <laughs> and intensified because we're coming to that point of the shift, you know, there's it's it has to almost become mm. more intense for people to pick a side. Mm. You know, we're having, we're being forced to choose really who mm. we are. I agree. That I agree. Are we going to the left or to the right and choose and understand yeah. understand what you're choosing as well? Mm. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't just kind of keep coasting anymore. Yeah. And say, it'll be okay. And I know I don't quite fit in, but oh, I guess that doesn't matter. No, it does matter it does. because we are here when we really recognize and accept who we are as light shamans and we feel that expanded purpose of us, then we contribute to this larger energetic movement that's happening. It's and I know, I know in a little bit, we're going to get into the cycles that we're going through as well. So this is such a beautiful segue, but I know we're still answering the light shaman question. But I, I want to get into that as well because it's so on point with the awareness that I've been receiving and navigating and adjusting to as well. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Are you not fascinated that we are going to be in the same region at the same time for the same purpose? It, I get the chills when when you say that, and it's it's yeah. wondrous. I mean, the, the awe of it. Mm -hmm. And there's yeah. an of course at the same time. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and the ah, uh, but we don't know where the corpus comes from, but it's rooted deep in a knowing. It's it's yes. What a fascinating world we live in. Yes. There is an urgency that is being felt within many humans, that is being felt within. Many of these light shamans who don't know they're light shamans, but do know they are light shamans. There's an urgency for you to return to places of energy, to return to places of significance, almost a space of where you are not only implanting yourself within that very field of source, but there is a requirement for you to draw from it. Mm -hmm. You have always given so much to earth. It has been a part of your journeys. And now there seems more than ever a requirement for you to refresh you. Mm -hmm. Hence why you, <laughs> there's this energy, there's this drawing to return to this area. Mm. it's fascinating isn't it mm. so Zah, just to really clarify the difference between earth shaman and, oh. and light shaman and one of the things mm. I always talks about mm. with us they always say we live within the earth and mm. when they say that what they mean is we live within this energetic field of earth we're not just on the earth we're within it we are part of the energy field of it which means then our earth shamans are, are, are not it's not just that they're earth bound because they are part part of the collaborate and communicate with the energy that was this and for me I almost see it as this bubble you know this earth sphere bubble that we uh, um, mm. that they communicate with but as light shamans we're obviously we do that because we're here for purpose we're, we're, we're meant to be here you know, on earth so we have that connection but can you speak a little bit more about the light component and, and the more expanded connection and communication that that mm. offers mm. To us? <sighs> so Ooh, yes. Um, <laughs> mm. So curious little wrinkly ones out there. Mm. And so as we began this conversation, we started with the uncomfortableness that you feel within you and the knowing that exists that is different to the uncomfortableness. Now, why does knowing exist? There's a knowing of you being more. And what is that knowing? That knowing is so familiar. It is a familiarity that is conflicting with the energy of you in this life. This knowing 
is of a you that exists in a field that is most incredibly abundant. Mm -hmm. You see, you are light shamans. And a light shaman is an energy that exists <laughs> not from earth. The energy of the light shaman is here upon earth, but you did not come from earth. You have, you could say, separated yourself, petitioned yourself, so that the energy of you is in one place and you're also experiencing you as physical in this place. Now, what is the purpose of this? There has always been a requirement. And so, you see, when Earth began and life was manifest upon this space, life is allowed to evolve within it. But creation is always curious as what would happen if. Let's make a few little tweaks, a few little adjustments. Because if the energy is that there is no time, then within the adjustments that are made, shall we say, there is a knowing of what will occur. And what we mean is this. Hmm. Um, you as light shamans, you come and go upon earth. You do not live sequentially upon its surface. Life after life after life after life of human. No, you don't. There have been very specific times when you of light shamans have come to earth for purpose. To help in the evolution, to help in the transition, to help in the turning on of the human form. Mm. Uh. And so 75,000 years ago was the first time where there began to be a change in the human form, where the human brain began its own change. And you, as light shamans, were there in that purpose. You have always been guides. You have always felt that deep within you, your own ability to guide. And yet sometimes this that guidance of you has been the greatest mm, frustration mm. because others don't listen. Others don't see you. Others don't <laughs> just wish to ignore you. Yet from where you used to be, from the energy that you know you are, there's a great significance there's a great purpose and it becomes frustrating not to fulfill that upon this earth because that was your decision when you came here. Now, uh, did you know though, and all of you are feeling it, why is it that all of you are feeling an urgency? Why is it that all of you are feeling something within you that is calling you? But what do I do? You see. You have known, you see, there have been these key moments in your Earth's movement. The key moments in a change of the human form. And then around your 43,000, a key change in the way that form began to relate to its environment, how it began to use expression and art and so on. And then in your 12,000, another key movement around when humans began to use more technology. But where did the technology come from? Hmm. <laughs> in all these moments. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Oh, goodness, yes. So just with those mm -hmm. dates, are, so what, what I understand you to be saying is for those of us that know and we can feel that we are light like shamans, mm. that we would have been here on Earth mm. at those key points as well as maybe other times. Oh, yes. But we'd have come back specifically around those periods yes. to play a part. Yes. 
And there is such a return mm. of light shamans now because, and this is the difficulty. You see, when technology was shared, the hope was, you could use the word hope, that because what was created first was the creativity, was the heart aspect before technology was given, that that would allow technology to be used in such a way that was supportive and sharing. But that is not what has occurred. And all possibilities are there. So mm, creation is always curious. <laughs> Let's just keep a little break in emergency glass just in case. <laughs> Dust the light shamans off. <laughs> Quick, send them down. <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> humans are going off track again. And then so you see, oh, um, and so you've been dusted off. And it's a curious time because many of you feel that you're even here a bit too early. Mm. Isn't that the most curious feeling that you are living in a life and you are thinking, hang on, I shouldn't be here yet? Mm -hmm. Because you all know. Mm. 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 It's interesting, uh, isn't it, when you say that, Zai, because I realise, I don't think I've articulated it before, but there has been a feeling of waiting. It's almost mm. as though, you know, we've been in this mm. holding pattern, waiting, knowing there was something coming, knowing there was a purpose but it hasn't, but it feels like now it's here. Mm -hmm. You know, that it's almost like we're, we're the waiting, they've opened the door from the waiting room and we're being allowed in mm, to agreed. do the work we came here to do. Mm. It's uh, it's it's interesting. I haven't, but I can really feel that. And, it, and it's interesting because what we're noticing, and I'm curious if others are too, is that as part of this, there's a lot of endings happening. Mm -hmm. Lots of things that are, feel like they're winding up, that no longer resonate, that it's like they've served their purpose, but now we're moving into this next frequency. They just, they're not a match for it, not in a bad way. It's mm. just that they're not part of what will be going forward. Right. And I still resonate with the waiting period. I feel like I've been waiting for today for decades. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And so... You see, you light shamans, let us also ask you this question. Is there something that you have just known how to do? You've not been taught it, yet it is just there. Where did that come from? Where did that knowing come from? You've just always known how to do it. Mm -hmm. Is that the most curious energy of all? Well, one of them. There's quite a list. <laughs> Lots of yeses in the chat. And we were yes. talking about this the other day in one of our workshops. So when we do the the European retreat, we do pre workshops as part of the preparation for us all. And we were talking about this. I said, Joe, are there things? And everybody had something that they had just known how to do. They didn't know how they knew it, but they knew it. And the story I shared was when I first um, when I finished my university degree very early pre-computers, you know, my, my master, my um, honours degree was typed up on a, on a typewriter, no computer. Mm -hmm. And then I went to this job which had computers and we were putting local history into a computer database, had never used one before. But almost as soon as I sat down to use it, it was like, oh, yeah, I know this. Mm -hmm. And I was doing programming and coding and it made sense. And it made so much sense that when there would be a problem and the, the company would send out the tech people to try to solve it, and I'd be sitting there with him and I'd say, Ron, what about trying that? And the number of times he just looked at me like I was an alien. And he said, how did you know that? And I go, I don't know. It just seemed like the thing to do. Mm. And at the end of the six-month contract in this little um, community program, they offered me a job as tech support in a tech support role. Now, I'd never used computers before. I didn't, ha I hadn't had kind of a technical background. I did honours and arts and history and politics. How did I know that? Mm -hmm. And that's for all of us. There are those things where we just go, how did I know that? And yet we all know it without any hesitation. And that's what your sayings are. This is, the, this is what we've learned over lifetimes, over mm -hmm. these key periods, mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. skills and tools. Mm -hmm. But no doubt they're relevant for now. It's not random that we now are remembering them in the particular way right. that we're remembering. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. You see, that's a beautiful awareness. And so you have this energy that is of technology. Now, in human form, you use it as you have shared. Well, <laughs> one of the ways you use it. But you see, the you that is not of here comes from a place that is of technology. And so let us share to you this awareness, and it may ooh, shock some of you, and yet some of you may go, yes, I've always known that. Hmm. Atlantis, have you ever asked the question, how come Atlantis seems to be in so many places? <laughs> how is it in the Mediterranean? How is it in the Bahamas? How is it in the South Pacific? Why? How come this thing is in so many places? It can't be in so many places, can it? Well, it can if it's not solid. <laughs> mm. If those of you light shamans who work in the field of energy, you are able to manifest energy into form and then collapse it again. It is almost as if you know you can observe something into effect, into creation. And so the energy of Atlantis has been in many places at many different times for great purpose. It was um, a space that shared technology. But then humans have not been able to because energy must reflect energy. The wholeness must be there. If there is a depletion in the human thinking, then the energy that was shared cannot stay. And that is why many of you light shamans have come and gone because you have seen where earth has started to, oh, 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 down we go. And the very field of you cannot exist in such a space. And so you return to your home and within the home you replenish. And then when you are replenished, you come back to finish your job. But there's still been the discontinuity. There's still been that disconnection of memory. The knowing that you know and the memory of the life that you're living does not match up. But your doggedness to stay is extraordinary. Even though a few of you have said, oh, no, <laughs> I'm, I'm bored, I'm tired, this is my last time. <laughs> we laugh. Yes, you've said it before. <laughs> but like little wrinkly ones, you come back because you know your purpose. These are your decisions. You're not forced to. You're not made to. This is you because of who you are. Because of the source field that you are, you make these, what may feel in this moment, sacrifices. But they are not. We wish you to feel the energy of you, of your knowing. Those things that you know that you don't know how you know. The places that you are attracted to, that you don't know why you're attracted to, yet when you go there, it feels like home mm -hmm. doesn't look like home feels like home isn't that curious <laughs> oh yes you're spooky all of you yes <laughs> so what's happening in your mind wrinkles <laughs> <laughs> well i'm curious all this intelligence that's pouring through and awareness and and these feelings that you're evoking of tuning us into what we're remembering how does this apply and and help with those that you support in community to to come to a place of remembering empowerment and awakening 
if you will, in, in this time that that aware state of purpose rather than the dormant one that's still waiting to be realized consciously. Mm -hmm. Is not the biggest journey of all the acceptance of self. Mm -hmm. But which self are you accepting? Mm -hmm. You see, humans are shown taught to accept <laughs> the physical self. And at one level, yes. But we wish you to begin to accept the knowing self. That self that exists in your field of knowing. That you that you feel so whole when you remember them. Mm -hmm. That is what we wish you to accept. And yes, community around you may find you curious. But then here's the piece. You exist as a duality. You have come from an extraordinary place to here, to earth, and you are in a human form. Always the thing is energy reflecting energy. Creation's knowing in the physical form. So your purpose has always been to be your knowing in physical form. And so the ultimate acceptance is the acceptance of all of yous, shall we say. <laughs> so that you don't be the one who scares the children. You become the one who is accepted by the children. Mm -hmm. So you are not denying yourself of who you truly are. And you are also not denying your physical form. Because the moment you accept you, then you can be the community you were here to create. Mm -hmm. Your source field is so important now to reunite a humanity that is so separated that will destroy itself if it is left to its own separated self. Now, what is the purpose of that? There is no purpose. That is, you could say, a failed experiment. Hmm. And I think when you talk, Zara, about us accepting mm. who we are, you know, accepting our knowing and embracing all of us, the physical and the energetic, and we talk about the bridge of collaboration, which is the energy and the mm. physical, not as an either or, which is how a lot of people have been kind of thought they had to live. You know, I have to, I have to um, deny and negate the physical me because that's a lower frequency and that's dense matter and that's blah, 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 judgment, judgment, judgment. I need to just be this energy or on the flip side, it's the, it's the other. But really, we're here for purposes, both. And it's that acceptance and the collaboration of both that is such the, a key as light shamans are when you speak yeah. about it. And part of the way for me, I know that I do that, is when that knowing surfaces, and even if I don't understand it or can't make sense of it or don't even know what to do with it, to just accept it and allow it, knowing that at some point that piece of the jigsaw will slot into place. Mm -hmm. Because our thinking tries to make sense of it often ahead of time and our energy is always ahead of our thinking. And so for people, if you're going, yeah, but I don't know, how do I do this? Just accept that everything you feel, everything you know, all of that expandedness that you don't quite know what to do with, that's okay. It's like we're gathering all the pieces of the jigsaw back that we've been kind of leaving little breadcrumbs of reminders for ourselves over lifetimes, mm -hmm. and we're gathering them, them back. And some of them are fitting together already, and others aren't. And that's okay. We don't want to doubt what we're getting. We don't want to question it. We don't want to dismiss things because, oh, well, that doesn't make any sense now. At some point, it will. And that's mm -hmm. that following our knowing. If it feels like it's a resonant match for our wholeness and our light and who we truly are, then go, okay, I'm just popping that one in for now and it'll make sense and it'll fit in at some point. Well, and I truly believe that, again, we're at a particular epoch in in humanity where it is that time and mm. we're coming together and we're in it. So uh, before we get on the call and y'all, we're going to take live Q&A in a little bit. We're going to go through the special offer because what's available there is just absolutely extraordinary. That's This is so powerful and so impactful. Um but I was so curious about this question. So we're going through these periods of time, this 43,000 years, 12,000 years, and this period now, 
And I want to tie that into also, Zar, because you, you'd mentioned where did that technology come from? And I'd love to answer that question because, again, a lot of these nodal points around the earth are conduits for that technology, if you will. And as we access something as awakening, but also where is that technology leading us as we as we're able to absorb the frequency, the voltage of the frequency because of the consciousness that we have now. Um, and what do you see that's providing as far as you use the word hope, but really what we're creating from here on out? So there's a lot of questions in that, but I'd love it if you'd kind of synthesize it for me, yeah. Well, there's beautiful wisdom there. So let us begin to guide you to this understanding. Mm. So if you can all remember, we shared that in the energy of Atlantis, and there have been other cities, regardless of their name, they are energy cities. They are cities that can manifest into form and then return to form. They can come in and out and they offer based on the energy in the field of the potential of the human in this moment, they offer. They offer possibilities, ways in which to alter and shift something which seems to be solid. Mm -hmm. Ways in which you use what is there in the moment to create something quite extraordinary that is there to support. And what so many humans have done is then they then take that technology to use against another. Now, you see what happens then is that the form, the energies that created that technology can then also dematerialize that technology. That is why you see so many places that were there and now are not. So many tiny little remnants of bits, but not the whole that are left. Now, you see, this is the same thing. Humans have such an ability of creating that they can indeed piece together. Now, they're not piecing together the whole. They're piecing together it partially, and it's still only partial because their purpose is to use it against another. The only thing that will alter that is an alteration in the way humans relate to each other. When humans begin to relate to each other in a complete and whole way, then the technology will come out of nowhere again to be returned for you to grow into possibility. Because it's there. You can't see it because it's hidden. But then when energy reflects energy, when the wholeness of the human is there, then it opens up. And many of you have seen it and felt it in small ways. But the energy, when you are feeling at your most extraordinary, your most compassionate, your most whole, things appear in front of you. Life seems simpler smoother you begin to manifest out of thin air you describe it mm. and then you get in the car and get stuck in your traffic and then it disappears <laughs> <laughs> bad preemption <laughs> but this is the topsy-turviness of being human this is the balancing of you realizing that whether there's traffic or whether there's not traffic, it's still the you deciding which you you are in every moment that makes the difference as to how you make that experience manifest. Mm. If wholeness can bring something forward, then is not your journey to stay in wholeness as much as you can throughout your day? And when you're not, just allow it to be just breathe just settle and then when you can interrupt the discomfort and come back to comfort
effort. And the more you do that, the more you begin to show up, the more you begin to remember. And this will be what we're here to share with you is how to remember the you that you think is missing. <laughs> because less like energy, it's there one moment and then energy humans go and it disappears. <laughs> You're all the same. You are the same as Atlantis. You see, the energy that brought Atlantis here is just enough light shamans that can get together in a group to manifest something solid. Hey, that reminds me, when we, we took a group to Alaska in 2018, it was our 10-year anniversary at Tsar, and so we took a group and Tsar said it was our purpose was to re physically re-implant the saffron heart frequency into the earth. Mm -hmm. And they chose Alaska because one of the, um, the 75,000 years ago, one of the um, key points was Siberia. A bit trickier to get to than Alaska. Close enough, Alaska said, oh, we, can do, we can do Alaska. So we took a group and we went, we found this um, place called Heart Lake in Sitka. And we, uh, the group we had were there about, I don't know, 40 of us or something. And Zara taught us chants and movements. And we were, there was a whole process we did as we stood on the side of the lake bringing that frequency back into the earth so that it was more accessible for everybody to be able to um, remember it was part of this light shaman return. And what was so fascinating was that evening as the ship was pulling out of port, someone, one of our group went on deck and they looked over and where we'd been, there was this golden saffron glow on the horizon. Wow. Now it wasn't west, there was no sunset. There was no, the town itself was a bit further off. It wasn't that. We asked people and saying, have you, can, and everyone could see it. It wasn't just we were making it up. No one had seen it before. And that was, as you're talking about, Zara, that makes me realise that's what was happening then. We were physicalising. There was such an aligned saffron heart frequency and light shaman frequency mm. that it came into physical 3D that mm. people could see it. Yes. Wow. It is the, mm. the earth. I never made up. that connection mm. with her. That's, that was the mechanism for mm. We knew we'd done it. We knew we created it, but the how of it is fascinating, yes. actually. The communication was opened. Mm. The beginning began. Oh. Mm. And, it, and it feels like we're attuning in our capacity to hold that vibrational resonance more steadily within ourselves is what's giving us this blossoming of a consciousness that we feel yeah. like we've been waiting for for so long uh yeah. so profound and again that and that's why i love the way that you share and teach and remind us and and the transmission also that helps us to attune mm. to to what's available and by being in in the presence of others who can hold that field steady yeah. for us to attend to and you do it in your special offer i want to get into special i want to get into q a but i really want to get into what you're bringing through in these workshops because it's a continuation and deepening into what we're speaking about today and and the time is now to the left or to the right choose choose your vehicle on how to get there um mm -hmm. but but we are i totally believe that we are being called to choose mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. and again my personal experience from what's coming through me and and and, and what's being revealed in multiple ways mm. uh, but you both and czar the three of you take others in there so elegantly and and so gracefully so y'all the vehicle for that with mary and gary and czar is with that in the special offer uh, the link for the special offer is in the chat box. Click on that blue link, open up to the special offer. Um, you can also find that page by typing beyondtheordinaryshow.com forward slash Mary. You know what? Let me double check the link and make sure I have it right. Uh, forward slash, and April will probably type it in there for me. Forward slash Mary and Gary 33. Mm. So you can type that in. Easiest way to get there is by clicking on the blue link. And before we take live calls, Mary, Gary, Czar, it, I'd love it if you would guide everybody what they're going to be um, having a relationship with when they take this journey with you. 
Thanks, John. Well, there's look, there's two packages, and one is the the self um, paced one, which is the key, obviously, for us. One of the keys for us stepping into living as a, as our light and being the light shaman is self love. We 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 are the foundation that we create first. And so the self-paced package is very much about tools we've created over the last couple of years for us to keep coming back to recognizing who we are, to loving ourselves, to feeling our wholeness, to knowing that we are worthy, regardless of what experiences we've had, regardless of the mistakes, regardless of the detours that we may have made, that because we are this extraordinary frequency of light and compassion, we are always whole and we are worthy because we are creation in physical form. So the first package gives tools for people to begin to shift their awareness and their understanding about that and to begin to embody that frequency. But the full package, which includes all of that foundational work, is really where the juicy, fun stuff is going to happen because it's two live workshops with mm. us at the ZAR. And in that ZAR, we'll be able to um, go much deeper in the understanding of what it means for us to remember that we are light shamans and how we can bring that into our moment by moment living and choices. So the the two workshops will be very interactive and Zara, there's always with Zara a lot of, um, I suppose it's, it's, it's very customized because all of our frequencies, while our core and essence is the same, who we've become over lifetimes has created a unique frequency. And so Zara always speaks to us as that unique frequency and helps us to tweak and shift and to align based on where we are and where we know we're wanting to getting to get to. And so those two live workshops are going to be very deep dive and very customized and personalized as well mm -hmm. in the in the package B. Um, and so you know if people can do that, that is, you know, package A is going to be great. Yes, things will shift. You will remember more of who you are. You will accept more of your life. You will love yourself even more and mm -hmm. you will be creating a ripple out and the deeper work will be happening in the live sessions. Hmm. Wow. In the first package, what, what are people being activated to? What's the awareness that comes through through those recordings? The awareness really in that first package, and so if you want to add anything with this, but the awareness really in that first package is the remembering of our wholeness and who we truly are. Mm -hmm. We are a... Um, that we are the universe and creation is a hologram. And so no matter how many, how tiny the piece of that original is, it's whole and complete and it's a perfect reflection of it. And so the tools to remember that and to live as that mean that we can, for me, it makes a difference in how I navigate in situations, that there's always a knowing of me that is beyond the taught self, the restrictions, the frustrations, the, you know, the life happening stuff, mm -hmm. even in the, um, almost even in that deepest moment, the remembering of who I am and my ability to get back to that faster is because of these foundational shifts. So we bring ourselves back to our own ability to shift our energy and continually come back into alignment with our light. There's an aspect of remembering. There's the cognitive remembering, if you will, but there's actually something that happens in the physicality, something that lights up in the cells that actually anchors in like the knowing of the remembrance. There's a difference because we we say that it's like, oh, I'm going to remember. But no, there's there's a whole different dimension of remembering that we're accessing when you attune in accord with the light that is coming through, truly. Yes. Yep. It's an embodying, isn't it? It takes it from this intellectual conceptual to the embodying and the living of it. Mm. It becomes alive. I feel like there's a vitality that 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 gets activated that just, it can't be denied anymore. It's going from swimming in a very still pool into starting to feel the currents that are guiding you somewhere. Mm. 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 You see, imagine yourselves as a guitar and the guitar within its potential is incredible sound is incredible gifts is incredible music but if the guitar is just there and there is no one to play it then the potential is just stuck in this form 
now. Then there is someone who comes along and strums it, but has no idea how to create with it. And so then the sound is there. Oh, suddenly the guitar mm, comes to life. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, a little bit discordant. A little. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Stop that, you would say. <laughs> oh. <laughs> mm. And then there is the synergy with somebody, <laughs> with the guitar, with feeling and knowing, and with the skill. And when the skill comes in and knows the sequence in which to play, then the sound that is generated takes your breath away. Mm. There is that connection between everything that is there between the player, between the feeling, and between the guitar. Now, that is what we are talking of here. Our purpose is to bring you home while still being in the physical. So in this moment, you're the guitar that does no awareness of how to play. Mm -hmm. And some of you have felt like you've been picking the strings on it, but goodness, the sound is just not what I was hoping for. <laughs> Sometimes we do, we do kind of randomly get the sequence oh, right, and it sounds beautiful, oh, yes. yeah, but yeah. it doesn't last. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I give myself a little bit. I'm with you, Mary, oh, yes. <laughs> it sounds good to us anyways, Ar. <laughs> it sounds good. That is... That is so. Um, but it yeah. makes me realize too, Sal, that as you're saying that, as we do um, come into this co creation and collaboration with, with us and the energy, and we create that beautiful frequency mm. of the sound, mm. then that enables us to then vibrate and resonate with others who are doing the same. That's mm. how the orchestra is created. Mm. We stop just playing our beautiful instruments on our own and we create this extraordinary symphony yes. of light and connection that ripples and others then hear that and then they're drawn to it yes you all spirit. wish to join with other instruments you all wish to join within a community because you know that is where mm. the power exists when mm. energy reflects energy when whole beings come together in their wholeness to reflect as one field then that field expands then that field connects to Saffron Heart. Then that communicator, the communicator between worlds, between planets, you can return home without even having to leave Earth. Mm. But the frequency of you must be in attunement. Mm. And that's the purpose of your journeys here. That mm, space of where, rather than mm, attempting to try to get rid of the confusion or the discomfort of being in this human form, move beyond it to realize your purpose for being here now. And they see the source of you as energy that then lives your life as that knowing. There is nothing you have to do. You do not have to heal the planet. You don't have to save the planet. But what you are here to do is to accept you. Now, as you accept you, others are curious because you're the honeypot. And now all the other little creatures come along. We want some of your sweetness. <laughs> and lick the sides of your jar. You see, that's what happens. Yes. So you become the human honeypot. And all you're doing is being you. Yeah. Isn't that what you're here to do? And as your wholeness opens, it's mm, infective mm -hmm. in a good way. Mm. <laughs> Mm. so beautiful mm. and that's really the freedom that i feel lives in my heart that truth that would you speak of that's really the ultimate liberation 
Y'all go deeper into the special offer. Again, the pre-recorded offer, uh, it's $97 to get the two life classes on top of that. It's only an additional $50. It's $147. Uh, there's a two payment option. Uh, anyone, if, um, if you can't open the link now, you can always go back to beyondtheordinaryshow.com forward slash marketplace and you'll find the link there. Copy and paste it here on the chat. Open up the browser, y'all. If you're on the computer now and have to get to it later, just keep it open on your on your browser and, and come back to it. Um, Mary, Donna's asking when the live calls are for the sessions. Do you have that handy? I do. We've got um, the first one is on Sunday, the 14th of July. Um, USA, it'll be uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Mm -hmm. And then there'll be a two-week gap. And then the second one will be the 28th of July. So we've given enough time for people to kind of, you know, have be able to plan ahead in their schedules and block them out because they will be recorded. And, you know, they're, they're fabulous always if you can't make it live and being live on the interactive courses, you know, everyone knows is, is almost so much more potent. So yeah. Yeah. And the processes, y'all, that are shared, I know that there was process that you have gifted to me. A couple of years ago, so I still resonated with, again, Earth speaking through me. Just, oh, my God, it's so wonderful and so powerful of what was grounding in. And, and I'm sure that there's more of that. It's, again, what gets taught and the impact um, through Zar with Marion Gary is just extraordinary. And, again, I can't not recommend it enough. Mm -hmm. uh, and, again, that's why they're on the show. That's why I want to introduce them or invite you further into um, working with them because I know the impact. So again, the links in the chat box, take advantage of it y'all. Um, and with that, I want to go ahead, um, uh, to open to some live Q and A, if you're open to that now. Yeah, absolutely. Fabulous. All right. Y'all. So Karuna K welcome to the call. You'll unmute your microphone, please. And what is your question? Hi. Um, wow. This is really grounding and something about it being here it's just yeah it's very grounding for me and i've really needed that lately um and my question is i know that i'm a light worker that mm. i'm a light shaman mm. and i've kind of gotten the idea that i love the earth and i've gotten more connected to it over the last mm -hmm. several years but i mm. also feel like i'm not from here mm. really and i once i realized i'm from somewhere else that mm. kind of felt there was something in it that felt ah mm. that explains why i feel as if i'm not really fitting mm. in anywhere right mm -hmm. i've really <laughs> had a solo journey for all my life, mm. I've also given in my career, I've given a lot as in service to mm. pregnant women and children. And I seem to serve others well. And I feel like I'm leaving myself out of that. Mm. And lately, I've had a few repetitive injuries and health things like mm. one year and the next mm. year and then. And so I, you know, I'm trying to formulate a question. I think <laughs> I'm young one, young one, young one. Let us, let us, let us share with you an answer because your question <laughs> will they all be the same. And so oh, mm, mm, oh. so first of all, you are correct that you are not of here that this is not home. No. But you see, you've decided. Now, hmm. So let us ask you this question. What have you known how to do that you have not been taught to do? Hmm. Well, really um, not an easy thing for me to focus mm -hmm. on me. But mm. I feel oh, actually someone pointed this out to me. It's my, and it was just several years ago, my ability to send people good wishes, good thoughts, mm. 
Mm. I was on a hike with a friend. They were looking for this woman mm. who was trail running and gone for two days. And so we did this quiet meditative hike. And at the end of the hike, he said, they found her. They found mm. her while we were there. Yes. And they mm. beat the horn. And my friend I was with was a retired police officer who I, I know now in hindsight was highly intuitive and telepathic. And he mm. was telling me, you helped her. I said, what do you mean? Mm. I just had a conversation with her. I said, <laughs> hey, if you really want to be fast, now's the time. Mm. You know, I was just mm. in silence. So I yes. think that is thing that just mm. yes. took me years to say and share. So, so young one, but here's the difficulty. Yeah. Where and how do you fit in? Your ability to communicate, you see, that's part of where your home was. That's why you came here. But the difficulty for you has always been you giving to you. You see, because you don't fit in, you share so much of you with everybody else, your ability to see and to communicate, that's unquestionable. But how you communicate and know you, well, that's on the back burner. There's always so many others who need it more than I do. No. Young one, if your purpose here is to open the communication channels, shall we say. The first channel that you must open is you to you. Hmm. Your ability to feel comfortable with you here in this life. This is a choice. And it's difficult because the memory of making that choice is not there. The knowing of the freedom you had before you came to earth is still within you. And that is the most frustrating piece of all. Because life doesn't reflect the freedom you know you are. Right? Yes. Mm. And so you're in physical form. And physical form is restricted. And you are not used to being restricted. Yet, it is time for you to use your ability to communicate with you to settle you, to heal you, to open you, to then you being here for what you decided to be here for. Hmm. In a nutshell, that's it. <laughs> Such a beautiful awareness because it is that you recognizing and valuing you and allowing yourself to see all the amazing abilities that you have that that you do without even knowing how you you know who taught you to talk to someone who was lost well nobody did you know you just knew that that was your knowing and so it's one of those keys it's part of why there is so much separation on the planet at the moment is because people have been taught not to recognize their gifts, mm. not to recognize mm. their light, mm. to dismiss that and focus everything out there. Well, what you what we create with that is this imbalance. And what we're needing, and it's why there's so much of the self-love pieces in our packages, we need to come back to that self-love and mm. worthiness and recognizing and celebrating and being in awe of who we all are. Because as we accept that as us, we then allow that to be the field that others can tap into as well. Mm -hmm. They can begin to love themselves. They'll stop judging themselves. They'll stop focusing on what's always they think is wrong with them, all of the mistakes. We start to celebrate us. And imagine if everyone on the planet came from a place of self-love because self-love is full, it's whole, there's nothing lacking. Mm. We wouldn't then do things to other people that depleted. Mm -hmm. So that beautiful self-love and acknowledgement and celebration of you yeah, is such a powerful you. shift. Hmm. Hmm. Why they're telling me to slow down? Just to well, be. what I can share also is you're such a beautiful energy, Kay. Such a beautiful energy. And and I have to ask, as I say that, how does that make you feel? I um, mm -hmm. 
It makes me want to be grateful that you said it. And um, there's, mm. there's, there's, there's an awareness, but there's also a, obviously still a non-acceptance. Exactly. And that's the point that I wanted to get to. One of the biggest initiations that we will all go through, especially those who are so used to giving for others, for others' benefits, because we want to make the world the way that we want to make the world to be so that we can feel better as well, honestly. Mm -hmm. But one of the biggest initiations that we all go through as empath sensitives connected in this way um, is the initiation of learning to receive mm -hmm. because we want to give but we have to learn to embody so that we can give from our full well and full wisdom rather than the fragments of what we are open to receiving and the places that are that feel in between the foreign lands and home are those places in ourselves that we haven't opened to truly to receive to feel safe to receive to believe that someone would think of us in such regard and again to come home to ourselves mm. as the lights that we pretend that we see others to be well if mm. they are the light, if they are that love how could you not be that as well mm. 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 beautiful so, an invitation yeah. and it's one of the hardest in, it's one of the hardest initiations i've undergone and i've been through a lot but the receiving aspect, true receiving and surrendering to that mm -hmm. and how that can arrange the pieces on the chessboard in my life in ways that I didn't expect because I can't control it if I'm in the true initiation of it. It's profound. Mm. Yeah. Mary, you were going to, you were going to add to that. I was just, I was thinking, you know, it's that also when you having lots of health conditions start to come up, you mentioned Kay. That you know that yeah. repeated. It's one of the ways that we kind of sneakily mm. force ourselves to stop and love ourselves. It's like I'm just going to keep whacking you around the head until you have to pay attention to you, yeah. rather than putting all of your attention out there. So it's always a choice. You know, you can get you know tickled by the feather and notice it. You can have someone flick you and notice it. They can punch you, or you can wait for that Mack truck. <laughs> you know, it's always a choice. But that's what we do. That's why because we are we came here with the from the decision to accept who we are to live as our light to live as that fullest expression to love ourselves as fully as we can because that's the gateway and entry point for others to do that as well and so if we've been a little bit you know tardy or we've taken a few detours to get to it then we're just going to keep putting things in our path until we go okay all right enough already this time is for me this is about me Everyone else will benefit, but this is where I begin. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Karuna K, thank you so much for coming on the call today. Yeah, beautiful conversation. All right, let's continue. Um, Linda, let's go to you now. If we can get you to unmute your microphone. And this Diane, been, I'll take it to you as well. This has been so much fun, first of all. Um, mm. Yeah, my question is, I always feel like I'm between two worlds. Um mm -hmm. I feel like I'm pulled on one side and always pulled on another and um, trying to walk the middle path is always difficult because I've got different energies that are constantly, you know, striving for, um, I would say my attention. Mm. <clears throat> so, <laughs> well, <laughs> let us just begin by saying, oh, welcome, <laughs> sister. Um, <laughs> and a little hallelujah. Let's just pop that in as well. Yes. <laughs> yes, you are walking two paths. And the reason you're walking two paths is because you're in denial of both. Because you feel you're being pulled between them. You see, if your purpose, if knowing exists within you, and that knowing is an existence of a you that, well, is, it's not a was, although it feels like a was, which is part of the confusion. But if this knowing is something that is you, 
And this knowing, you are attempting to integrate into your human field. But then there's also mm, the requirements of you being in the human field. Then the journey for you is, which is there for so many light shamans, is purely the integration rather than the resistance. So rather than being feeling that you're being pulled between the two, you're going to integrate the two into one. And that is quite, we understand a journey. But then you're knowing, okay, let us ask you quickly this question. What? <laughs> Tell us the knowing of you. Okay, like from about 25, 30 years ago, hmm. when I started to channel some poetry, it's hmm. almost like I got it from Lemuria and got it from Atlantis, got it hmm. from Egypt, got it from the stars, I got it from the Pleiades, you hmm. name it, I got it, no matter what. And I have followed it and I know that it is almost completely accurate. Yes. So you're a communicator, young one. So your ability to communicate with energy, with fields, whether it, remember, there's no time, even though it feels ancient. <laughs> <laughs> you see. So your ability to communicate. Now, isn't it fascinating that's what you can do and yet your ability to communicate with you in this physical form has been in some ways the struggle it's not about denying it is about integrating you integrating you into this form that is here you using the communicative knowledge that is being shared with you to enhance this life that you are living for you and for others that's your purpose. That's why you decided to be here, to open the channels up so you can share you with others. That's it. Pretty good. <laughs> Very good. I have that, such a great question, Linda, because what I've just realized, we're going to be doing the workshops, and it's, it's always, I love the way the energy works, mm. Uh, mm. that we knew, we kind of had the bare bones, we had the, the, you know, the kind of the skeleton of what the live workshops would be, but I didn't, I could feel some of it, but not all of it. And I knew, I thought that doesn't matter because once we're on the call and we feel the energy of the group that are resonating, mm. the rest of it will be there. Mm. And I've just realised what it's going to be, Zah. Mm. It's exactly what Zah just said with you, which is we are will be guided back to what is our gift in mm. a way. What's mm. the ability that we came in with mm. as light shamans mm. for us to share with others, but more importantly, what we'll all have experienced is our inability to <laughs> um, share that gift with ourselves mm. first mm. and it'll be the embodying for us of our gift that will allow us to then yes broadcast that to use that to remember it at a much much deeper level that's what the workshops those yes. workshops are that's how you fulfill your purpose mm. that's you see your purpose is the embodiment of you being mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, fascinating. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Thank April's, you very much. Yeah, th thank you, Linda, for coming on. Great question. Both April, of you. April, Chris, I, they already knew. They put the link for the special offer you all in the chat box again. Uh, again, package A is $97 with the two like live workshops. It's $147. It's going to be so beautiful. It already is. I feel like it's building from here, obviously. Uh, and of course, we'll run the replay so y'all can come back and listen and, and get back into the wisdom that's coming through here. Um, so again, open up that link, purchase it, or keep the tab open if you want to read through it. Um, we're not quite just ending, but I wanted to put that out there for now. Um, and with that, Diana, welcome to the call. It's good to see you. Hi, John. Hi, Mary. Hi, Gary. Zara, thank you for having me. It's good to be here. Um, it's funny because the last um, the last statement you mentioned is... Um, is to connect with the ability you came in with. And that was my question because mm. um, a few years ago I used to channel, but then I stopped 
Um, and I wasn't sure if um, if I was really channeling or or just making it up or be imagining it. So I kind of stopped. Mm. So um, I guess I've reached a, a point where I'm like, uh, okay, what what is my real ability? Um, mm. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Well, you see, <laughs> you know, oh, isn't that fascinating? So this energy that you describe as channeling, how did it begin? Did you just wake up one morning and there it was? How did it begin? Um, meditation. Uh, just uh, Ooh, okay. meditation or, or just deep. So within the energy of meditation, within the energy of quietness, within the energy of you disappearing from you, something showed up. Yes. 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 Now, what get on, what got in its way? You. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thinking you. Yes. Not the proving. <laughs> <laughs> it was going, I'm back. And the thinking you goes, oh, I don't know about that. Oh, I don't know. I think I better doubt this a bit. <laughs> yes. Yes. We best control her now. Let's control her. We must keep her in this little box. We can't let her out. She could She could change the world. We don't want that. No, let's keep her tiny. Yes. We'll use thinking to manipulate her. Yes. Young one, when there are no coincidences, there are no coincidences. When you disappear, when you get out of your way, energy comes through. Mm -hmm. That's who you are, you see. But then your thinking, your identity, the challenges that come with that ability can be very overwhelming in human form. Mm -hmm. Nobody accepts you. You've spent your whole life attempting to be accepted. And then you become a channel. Oh, goodness, you're right back to square one again. Everybody. <laughs> hiding and running under the couch you see that's not so you you stop the ability to channel is the ability to open you to energy how that energy is then utilized is what your journey of understanding is mm -hmm. the first thing is the acceptance of you in your ability it came through in meditation when you were peaceful and your thinking was not there. Mm. How perfect you are, young one. This whole journey, you see, the more you begin the acceptance of you, the more this ability, this channel, this communication can work with you rather than you working against it. Well then, <laughs> yes, we don't. We shouldn't call them in it. They'll come up. Yes, yes, it's a them. There's more than one. So don't. <laughs> yes, it's time to play, young one. It's time to play. And again, it's that starting point, Diana, is having the conversations with them with that energy for you. Mm, yes, yes. You know, Chat and you know one of the ways we always teach to communicate with energy is just to ask that open question, saying, "What is it you wish to share with me now?" Just that open space of curiosity, and rather than going in, because what we often will do, our thinking self goes, "I've got a whole, you know, I've got a laundry list of questions." So can you tell me? And I want to know. And what about? Mm. Yeah, yeah, you can get to that. But it's like on a first date, you want to just say, "So let's just get to know each other." What is it you mm. wish to share with me? What is what 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 do you want these conversations to be? This is this is what I'm curious about. What will you tell me? What will you share? And just beginning the conversation just for you. It always comes back to us, our gift. We we bring in a gift for ourselves first. And as we unwrap it, then we have the capacity and the ability to share it with others. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, thank you, Diana, for coming on. Oh, uh, thank I, you. For yeah, it's wonderful to see you and great question. It's I have to share, I've been in, in a deep practice for the last couple of months, taking me deeper into this augmentation and this acceleration of heart that's coming through. 
And, and then the process is I can feel this fire kind of flaming bigger and bigger. And a lot of it was about, it started becoming about trying to get there rather than being with it. And, <laughs> and it was, and it was still growing. It was still, I could still feel it, but something happened. And the timing of your question is so perfect, Diana, because this actually occurred to me last night. As I went into that practice, um, I had been on a phone call with my two-year-old grandson a couple of hours before. And he just lit up when he saw me. Uh, that connection with grandparents and, and grandkids is amazing, by the way. Uh, anyway, but as I went into this practice and I went into that deep meditation, I remembered that ignition that took place in our hearts from that call. And, and in that, I remembered that my purpose, that the ignition, that it's true intention mm. is love. It's love. That's it. And when I got into that place of love rather than needing to become something or trying to access something, and I was with the fluidity of the understanding that it's love that's guiding all this, that's igniting it, that is the fuel behind all of it, what happened in my field took my practice to a whole nother level. Yes. It's a whole nother level. If we can remember that love is our purpose, yes. what we're striving for. Amazing. Zara, please. Yes. That's so you see, you understand. Mm. The moment as a, a human, you place the energy of, I'm going to try and make this. Mm. Now, mm. if energy reflects energy, the very thing you put into the field, into your own field, which is trying, that's doubt. Mm -hmm. I feel so good now. I'm going to make it bigger. You're already deciding what you did before is not enough. You're already trying to make something more. You see, that's an energy of depletion. And then you talk to your grandson. Mm -hmm. And within that energy, you didn't have to try to feel love. It was okay. just there, didn't it? You just, oh, yes, this is a little tricky one, this fellow. No, I'm really going to have to work really, really hard to love this one. Oh, <laughs> and sweat for it down. Like Let me this. call in my guides. Let me uh, Gaia. Uh, Let me do all that. Uh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> it's a tough kid. No, yeah, no thinking involved. No. Just heart space knowing. It's yeah. there. Mm. And that is what is the potential that is there with everyone. The, yeah, the other young one who was going to try gratitude. Good luck. Try gratitude. I'm trying to be grateful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Yes, you know that will never work. Mm. You've already told yourself you're not enough to be grateful. You see, energy reflects energy. I am grateful. The energy of of grateful is the reflection of you and your knowing. Mm -hmm. It's the end result. Gratefulness is the end result of you. It's not something you generate. It's something you are. Just as the love you just shared then, young one. Love mm -hmm. is something you are. You don't have to generate it as soon as you see this little one the love is instant. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be more. You don't have to hone it, skill it, trying to fold it and mold it. You're just instantly giving all that is required in that moment without hesitation or trying. Mm -hmm. That's what is. That is who you are. And that comes from acceptance. Mm -hmm. Perfect, young one. Perfect awareness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a beautiful me. experience. Yeah, beautiful experience. And it's a beautiful practice too that we share called the practice of beauty, where when you see in that example, John, when you saw your grandson and your heart just filled and overflowed, mm -hmm. you say, ah, yes, mm. there I am. Mm. <laughs> yeah. oh, because oh, you can't see yeah. and feel it and appreciate and recognize it outside unless it is us as well. And so anytime we see something that we see is beautiful or makes our hearts expand, whether it's a, another person or beauty in nature or an animal that we love or whatever, the sunset, as soon as we see and feel that fullness, that completeness, to say, ah, yeah, that's me. Mm -hmm. There I am. Mm. We come back to that acceptance of us. 
we use that as the little reminder to go, yep, I'm always here. I just, I just kind of, you know, I lose sight. I, I get, I focus over here rather than back into all that I am. So mm -hmm. it's such a beautiful practice with that memory and that knowing. Oh, it, it was amazing. And, and that really brings me to, to, to again, to wrap up in a bow that this conversation, it's, it brings me to this place of the technology and, and that as we entered these sacred temples, if you will, the temples mm -hmm. presence with others in that space, that's where we're ready to access the technology mm -hmm. that's here for us as we as we again remember who we are, we we are present, we can hold that field steady, vibrational level to create something like has never been created before with that level of presence and directed energy with that yeah. heart. Again, the technology is put here with the assumption of our heart. And the assumption of the heart doesn't have to be presumed anymore if we're willing to remember, to open, to, to, to jump off the cliff mm -hmm. um, and know exactly where we're going to fall into. Mm. Beautiful. Mm. Yeah, we're jumping yeah. off into the know and not into the unknown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Such an amazing call. It's Zara, thank you so much. Are, are there final words that you want to um, leave us with tonight? Mm. 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 So many of you look for Atlantis. So many of you look for Lemuria. So many of you look to other names. All you need to do is to look in the mirror. Mm. Because if you are looking for these homes, then just as young Mary shared with that thing of when you see beauty and you say, there I am. If that energy of the Pleiadians, of the Lemurians, of the Atlanteans, of whoever you wish to, the Syrians, whatever name you wish to describe, if that energy is there within you, then look in the mirror and say, hello. <laughs> I'm home. If the knowing is that strong, then accept what is. You don't have to leave here to go there. Mm. We just have to bring energy to reflect the energy and look at you in the mirror and say, welcome. And then listen. So it is a journey that all of you have decided with great purpose to be on. You are indeed saviors, but without the pressure. <laughs> That's a relief. Yes. <laughs> without, the without the sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> there'll, be, there'll be no, no burning or beheading. No, no. crucifixion. No, no. no. no persecution. No. All for joy. No, that's right. <laughs> It's just time, young ones. You know it. You've felt it for so long. It's been agitating and itching you for ages. <laughs> time to soothe that itch. Time to soothe that sense of self by accepting this you. And stepping into the shoes you decided to fill so long ago. <laughs> Perfect, yes. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, Mm. Sorry, thank you so much. Mm. And as and as Gary comes back, want to wait and acknowledge Gary as well. Mary, thank you so much. This has been so wonderful and heart expanding and even more awakening. Um, as we all get to hum in this energy together. Um, thank you, John. Will you always create and hold such a beautiful space and community for these conversations because again it's energy reflecting energy the information can only come through from Zah when there's a field that's a match for it otherwise it's these conversations don't happen so everybody who's on the call and all the people that will be listening back created this space the match for the energy so thank you to you john and to everybody mm. welcome back yeah and to everybody and gary thank you to you also welcome back
Ah, oh, no worries. Thanks, mate. Good to be here. <laughs> <laughs> no worries it's at all. It's always good to have a little snooze in the middle of the day. <laughs> do, you, do you remember any of this conversation? Parts of it? No, not really. No, you'd think I would after all this time, but not really. No, wow. I have a good feeling in there, but um, yeah, I got no idea what happened. Well, it was a... freaking amazing. I'll tell you that. Oh. <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> it is worth a listen for sure. Um, oh, well, this is yeah. <laughs> thank you both so much it's been so wonderful having you on here and it's again you both feel like home to me so thank yeah, you, love you thank you yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you, and John. and everybody on the call thank y'all y'all the link for the special offers in the chat box it's on beyond the beyond the ordinary show marketplace you can find it there also take advantage of this y'all are amazing thank you so much i love thank you all. And I look forward to seeing y'all on the next call. And I look forward to our next time that we're together. That's too sure. Thanks, Thanks guys. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.